All righty. We have a really interesting construction update today. I am going to drop the T. I decided I'm going to drop the T and I'm going to discuss it. Um, so right there, you're going to see a control point and the guy who did it driving off. And then you're going to see him drive into the park. And he's going to start painting some other ones. So right here, he's using his GPS surveyor tool. Um, and what he's trying to do is he's trying to find an exact point. So he's using the GPS, which connects to some satellites in the sky. Um, and it's going to point him to the exact point of interest um, to create almost like a border, a control point for the CAD file. So this is a process. If you watched my video from yesterday, if you haven't, I recommend it. I go over all these details. Um, so essentially what he's doing is he's creating a border, uh, presumably around Kingswood. And um, that is for a future construction project. So um, yeah, that's pre it's pretty exciting because uh, this is like part of something that uh, we discovered. So Canada's Wonderland, for those of you that have watched, um, obviously this is speculation and rumors coming from me. But it looks like Canada's Wonderland may have taken out a loan under their name for a specific project. And we know that loans do not get taken out by parks for roller coasters and restaurants. Um, that is a part of the Cedar Fair uh, $200 million budget that they allo allocate um, per season. So this is a separate loan, which leads me to believe that is for uh, a hotel. Um, so... With that being said, I do speculate. Again, this this part is 100% speculation. Um, I do not know what's going in Kingswood yet. Um, and I don't think I'll know for a bit because I don't think this is a project that's due next year or even 2025. But I am speculating that the Kingswood plot of land will be chosen to be a hotel. And I think that Wonderland is going to drop that original hotel plan they had and they are going to... Um, kind of move forward with a much larger kind of hotel project. I even could see them um, going with a indoor water park. I think that would be perfect for the city of Vaughan. I think it's the perfect location. And I know everyone watching this video right now is spamming that dislike button because they disagree with my opinions. But honestly, no matter how you look at it, Wonderland is becoming a destination park and they need a hotel. There are a lot of hotels in the area, but there are no hotels with water parks in the area. So a family-oriented water park, indoor water park hotel, similar to Great Wolf Lodge, on property can be open year-round. And uh, on top of that, it, it could offer uh, families something to do, even staying on property and they have their own entrance. It's a great thing to draw in that upper middle class to the park year round so it's definitely something i cannot see cedar fair not eyeing um and i definitely think that is a, a very safe speculation to move forward with but as you can see here you, he's um setting up his thing and then he's gonna mark it with those control points and then there's also one just off by behemoth's last airtime hill leading into the break run um, so from this new drone spot, by the way, I have never used this drone spot, but across from the park near the tolls, um, just across the street from Jane street, there's a park there, um, with a whole pond and, uh, I've been utilizing it a lot because it's got some really awesome, um, angles and shots from there. So I I'm obsessed with it now, but yeah, as you're going to see here, he's going to remove this GPS um, tool and then he's going to spray paint the ground and then he's going to move on to the next spot. And again, he is circular. He is incumbent. Uh, I can't speak English today. He is circling around Kingswood with these markings, um, which again is the border for the construction project. Something that I can use as an example um, that I actually messed up before is uh, this was seen at front gate. And if you remember, I actually said that these were um, significant points because that's where a building um, or object or column, support column for a ride would go. That's what those markings are. That's actually not true. So it was down, I was heading in the right direction with a point of significance, but they're actually control points. So they're, they're, they act as a border for a CAD project um, for engineering. So um, essentially everything that those circle around um, is the important kind of area of a construction so you will see something going on in kingswood over the next couple of years 
Um, I think this is going to aim for a 2026 opening, depending on when they start to dig ground. I am really confused because they've been moving a lot of things into Kingswood. So now they got to figure out where to move those away from like how are they gonna where are they gonna put all these things in kingswood so here's that other control point um right by behemoth's little airtime hill and then you guys are gonna see um over at extreme sky flyer so over at extreme sky Flyer, by the way i have news on front gate okay which also derails something i was predicting um about the two phase thing so we'll have to see um we are jumping the gun on front gate renovations going back and forth um, but I do like to trust some of the birdies, especially this specific birdie. Um, so I'm going to hold out on the part, the two part renovation, but over at extreme sky flyer, they are rushing to get this thing torn apart. So here they are ripping up all the concrete, um, under extreme sky flyer by the end of the day. So this was around 11 AM. I flew around 5 PM and it was all gone, including the guest areas. So interestingly enough, like they are moving rapidly. So I definitely expect the crane to show up and remove this ride sometime next week. Um, I have a feeling that's why they're removing the concrete because I feel like a giant crane that is going to lift these kind of big pieces uh, when they start disconnecting it, it, it would kind of break up that concrete as well. You see examples of that um, actually at Sledgehammer. If you look at Sledgehammer's kind of concrete form around the ride, you'll see it's all cracked up. That's when they bring in those cherry pickers and all that and the, the crane when they were lifting heavy parts in. That's actually what breaks up the concrete. And if you go around the park and you see broken bricks, it's from the heavy machinery driving on it. So just a little cool random fact for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, over at Front Gate, not much prog progress to the naked eye, but there is a lot of work going on with electrical, um, getting those lamp posts in there and uh, that nice timber kits building. But definitely they are mostly done when it comes to the concrete work. There is brick work about to take place. Um, and to finish off the lumber, there's the blocking off the um, old entrances into the plaza. So those will be exits. So they're going to figure out a way, I don't know, probably with turnstiles and stuff uh, to prevent guests from going in there. Now, when it comes to front gate, you're going to see some interesting things start to take place. But yeah, nothing else going on around the park. As you can see, Clockworks receiving its maintenance. Um, no evidence of vehicles going in and out when I flew today, but they are still in there. Um, there's the concrete pads that they've been storing, um, for extreme sky flyer. And what you're about to see is some contractors, a third party company, um, the ones that have been working on the merch store actually. So again, these are different companies doing different jobs. So the specific company that from what I can tell from find the drone that is doing the out decal, the decals of the merch store and the woodwork. Um, came out with blueprints and was monitoring and examining the guest services building and the, the structure that holds the logo, Canada's Wonderland logo. So it'll be really interesting to see if that translates into a full reno this year. Um, over at Mindbuster, work is obviously progressing. Um, all the wood panels are almost in, and then they'll get the guide rails in after that. Um, again, really excited to see how smooth this part of the ride is when the ride opens this year. Whew, I'm almost out of breath. This is a big update. Um, but yeah, outside of that, the merch store is, you know, coming along really nicely, actually. As you can see, I do want to point out that that wood on the top of the roof does match the old decal of that building. So I, I see a similar design. No modern look, maybe. Maybe just going with the same old, same old, which is kind of yuck. I do not like the look of our front gate, to be honest. So I am a little disappointed if that's the case. Um, but yeah, so you're going to see like one of those pickup trucks. Um, it's parked actually just down there and it's going to move over to the front gate area. This is a final shot of all the concrete ripped up under extreme sky flyer, including the guest walkway path that leads you up to the ride. Most of the parts for this ride are stored in Kingswood. Um, again, like everything else in the park. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for extreme sky flyer. Again, it's crazy. I fly twice a day now, guys. Like, I literally fly twice a day, and there's always something to see. It's incredible. So here you are. Here's that third-party company. They're looking at all the yawnings of the guest services building, and then they are looking at, you'll see, like, a little electrical cord from the detectors going up into the ceiling. I don't know if that's what he's looking at, um, but, yeah. So they were analyzing those, and he's going over to this side. And there was a guy with blueprints over behind the building there that was looking up at the logo and pointing at the tops of this building. So I do not know what that's going to translate into. So just wanted to show you guys that because that is pretty cool 
um, information, and it does hint at maybe they are going to move forward with a full reno this year. But yeah, anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I said that like there wasn't much, but that's a lot. And see you guys on the podcast today at 8 p.m. Surya will be there. Bye.